Poor buoyancy control can be a literal killer in dives as it will be a foundation of every skill you can obtain as a diver and bad buoyancy can lead to fatal situations. Not even to mention it ruins your air consumption, scares away marine life, and can even damage the fragile ecosystems. But here's the good news. With these five tips, you can transform your buoyancy into a peak performance, which will become your ability to pin your depth on a whim and enjoy your dives significantly more. Now, let's talk about our first tip, weight. Not those post-holiday pounds, I mean the lead you're lugging around underwater. Did you know that many divers are carrying enough extra weight to sink a small ship? It might be true, it's holding them back more than they realize. The difference between struggling and soaring underwater often comes down to a few simple ounces. Let's get into how to correct those weighting issues once and for all. Proper weighting is the unsung hero of buoyancy control. It's like finding a perfect balance on a seesaw. Too much on either side and you're either plummeting to the depths or floating away like a wayward balloon. But get it just right, that almost feels superhuman. Like you're flying through the water like Peter Pan. Let me show you a common scenario I've witnessed countless times. Picture a diver decked out in all their latest gear, looking like they're ready to explore the Mariana Trench. They hit the water and immediately start sinking like a rock. In a panic, they inflate their BC until they're vertical, fighting against their own equipment just to stay at depth. On the flip side, being underweighted is no picnic either. I once forgot my weight belt and proceeded with the dive anyways. I was so light at the end of the dive that I could barely stay down for the safety stop. I was kicking furiously, looking more like I was trying to escape the ocean and enjoy it for the whole three minutes of the safety stop. Trust me, that's not the kind of workout you want at the end of your dive. So how do you find that Goldilocks zone of perfect weight? It starts with a proper buoyancy check. Before you dive in, float at about eye level, empty your BCD while holding near full breath. When you exhale, you don't need to exhale all the way, but you should start to sink slowly. And if you breathe back in fully, you should float right back to the top without even having to fin. And on the flip side, if you don't sink at all, then you're too light. Remember, the goal is to use as minimum weight as necessary. It's not about how much you can carry, it's about how little you need. And the primary reason for this is in the event your BCD fails. Maybe it pops on the dive, maybe a shark just comes out of nowhere and takes a nibble at it. You don't know what's gonna happen. And if it fails, you need to be able to surface with your own two fins and your breathing. Keep that in mind always. And here's a pro tip. Do a proper weight check whenever there's been a prolonged period in between your dives or conditions change, your equipment configuration has changed or your body composition changed. It's always good to do a weight check whenever something could have potentially changed to make sure you go down with the proper weighting and not too much and not too little. By consistent fine tuning your weighting, you'll develop an intuitive sense of what feels right. Mastering your weighting is like unlocking a cheat code for diving. Suddenly, those small adjustments that used to feel like wrestling an octopus become effortless. For our second tip, ever wondered why some divers seem to defy gravity, hovering motionless like an aquatic astronaut? The secret lies in a technique so fundamental you've been doing it since birth. But underwater, it's a whole different game. Many divers overlook the power of their own lungs in maintaining buoyancy. It's a built-in BCD that many of us forget to use and is necessary for controlling precision adjustments at depth. Every breath you take underwater is a minor buoyancy adjustment. Inhale and you become slightly more buoyant. Exhale and you'll sink a little bit. It's a delicate dance that once mastered will make you feel like you're defying the laws of physics. Once you start your dive, drop down to your planned depth and then start to use your BCD with a couple quick presses to add just enough air that your depth is stable and about half lung full of air. You can move yourself up or down just by breathing in and out. If you can be fairly neutrally buoyant at half lung, you're in a good spot. But here's where many divers go wrong. 
They treat breathing underwater the same way they do on land, shallow, rapid, and often erratic. The key is to embrace a diaphragmic breathing, also known as an abdominal breathing. It's the same technique used by meditation gurus and opera singers, but underwater, it becomes your secret weapon for buoyancy controls. To practice this, try lying flat on your back on land. Place one hand on your chest and the other on your belly. Now breathe deeply, focusing on expanding your belly rather than your chest. Feel that? That's your diaphragm at work. It's your ticket to smoother dives. Underwater, this technique becomes even more crucial. By taking slow, deep breaths from your diaphragm, you're not only improving your oxygen intake, but also creating a more stable platform for buoyancy control. The steady up and down bobbing is slowed so greatly it's hardly noticeable and suddenly it feels like you're floating in place. Now, let's talk about these micro adjustments. If you find yourself drifting upward, try extending your exhalation. It's like slowly letting air out of a balloon. It'll start sink ever so slightly. You can basically think about it, and especially you physics lovers, as acceleration. If you breathe in fully, you'll start accelerating upward. And until you cross basically neutral buoyancy, you will be accelerating upward. So ideally, you'll be exhaling before you go over zero, that neutral buoyancy, and the closer to neutral buoyancy you stay, the less acceleration you'll have overall. So it's kind of an equilibrium wavelength that you, you will try to control with your breathing. On the flip side, if you're sinking, a slightly deeper inhalation can give you that little boost you need. It's a subtle art, more finesse than force. Remember though, breath control isn't about holding your breath. That's a one-way ticket to a world of trouble toward a lung overexpansion injury that if you aren't paying attention and you start ascending, it could be bad news. Instead, focus on maintaining steady rhythmic breathing pattern. Don't get me wrong. When you master your buoyancy, holding your breath strategically, if your depth is pinned, it's okay to hold that breath to take a stable photo with your camera. But ensure you are not naturally holding your breath out of habit because that is where the danger lies at breath hold during an ascent is bad news. Practicing this technique can feel strange at first. It's not uncommon to feel a bit lightheaded as you adjust to this new type of breathing. That's why it's crucial to start in a controlled environment. A pool, a lake, or any shallow calm water is perfect for honing this skill. As you get more comfortable, you'll find that this breathing technique becomes second nature, allowing you to focus more on the wonders around you and less about the buoyancy struggles. You've got your breathing down, but something still feels off. For our next tip, if your fins are sinking or your torso is constantly below your body and you're fighting to stay level, then we have a solution for you. It's time to talk about finding your trim. And trust me, it's a game changer. Let me show you what I mean. Picture two divers exploring a vibrant reef. The first is practically vertical, legs dragging below them like an anchor, arms flailing to maintain position. They're working twice as hard and scaring every fish away within a 10 meter radius. Now look at the second diver. They're perfectly horizontal, arms relaxed and in front of them, gliding through the water with minimal effort. Which one do you think will have air left for a longer and more enjoyable dive? Not to mention, which one do you think the fish are gonna get closer to? Proper trim is the art of positioning your body horizontally in the water, and it's crucial to diving efficiently. It's not just about looking cool, though it certainly does. It's about efficiency, conservation of energy, and ultimately, your safety. The ideal posture is flat and fully horizontal to have good neutral trim. This is to maximize your ability to move in the water. If you imagine water coming this way with current, you'll want to be flat so that water can disperse around you. Which way do you think will be able to move through water easier? Bad trim like this where 
current is coming and hitting you like this and dispersing along the width of your body or where your horizontal and current is coming like this and having to split. If you answered the flat horizontal neutral trim, you're correct. And this example shows why good neutral trim is also called streamlining and becomes more important in current dives. So practice as much as you can until neutral trim feels natural and you can hold it while working on something like deploying a DSMB. This is usually called in diving task loading, doing something active while also maintaining your buoyancy and trim. Achieving proper trim isn't always easy, especially for newer divers. It's like trying to balance on a tightrope while wearing a bulky suit and carrying a tank on your back. Many struggle with the feeling of vulnerability that comes with exposing their entire body to water. There's a natural tendency to want to sit up underwater, but that is precisely what we need to overcome. But expect it to take patience and lots of practice. One way to picture this is to imagine yourself skydiving. The position you're going to want to be to slow down is the air brake. This is where you have control of your falling position and you can slow down in the air as much as you can. This is where you pull your head back, you bring your arms out and you're laying flat and you display out with your legs. And the physics of falling from the sky actually work in a similar manner in the water as well. And so the same way you want to break going up and down in the water is with that same air brake position. In scuba diving, we call it neutral trim, but it's the same concept. And you're trying to break from going up or down, and this allows you to control your depth with higher precision. You will find as a diver, if you try and stay horizontal, it's much easier to change depths than if you're laying flat. So give it a try. Go ahead and throw a flat piece of something in the water it will sit and start falling very slowly until one of the sides fall underneath the other and then it'll start falling very fast. The same way you want to stay flat and don't allow one side to teeter totter and start making you fall faster in your depth. So how do we stay in this elusive horizontal position? To start, there is a reason why this tip comes after tip one and two because those need to be fairly solid before you can start improving your trim. So if you're finding trim hard, go back to tip in one and two and keep practicing that. Each tip in this video is meant to be sequentially building on top of each other. Start off by going horizontal and focusing on your core. Imagine a string pulling your belly button towards the surface. This mental image can help you naturally align your body and you'll want to be squeezing your butt a little bit as well. Next, pay attention to your legs. They should be bent at the knees, forming a 90 degree angle with your fins pointing straight back or slightly off to the side. Your back should be engaged and your legs arched up. Next, your head should be always looking straight up ahead of you. And one really common issue of trim is that improper weight distribution, which builds off your weighting skills. If you're falling left, if you're falling right, or your legs are sinking, or your upper torso is sinking, you'll find it's like trying to balance a seesaw. And depending on your gear configuration, it could be a lot harder to balance. Remember, the goal is to be neutrally buoyant with your body parallel to the surface, not fighting against your own equipment. You can position your weights higher on your tank and trim pockets in your BCD with extra pouches in your tanks can bands. If you are having trouble with this, I do have another video for you that goes a lot more in depth into trying to get that weighting just right. Check it out up here and in the description below. Regardless, it is likely going to take multiple dives to adjust the weighting until neutral trim feels like it's natural to hold and you'll need to fiddle with the weighting in between dives. Practice makes perfect. Try floating face down, arms at your sides in front of you and focus on maintaining that horizontal position. It might feel strange at first, like you're constantly about to tip forward, but stick with it and soon it'll feel more second nature. Once you've got the basics down, it's time to fine tune. Pay attention to your movement underwater. Are you using your arms to swim? That's a common mistake that can throw off your trim. 
Instead, focus on your fins for propulsion, keeping your arms close to your body and still as possible. It's this efficiency that helps maintain that streamlined posture. In addition, when you fin, focus on finning with as little drop or motion in your hips and knees as possible, as this also breaks your trim. If your legs do drop when you fin, it can break your trim. The legs should remain up and in trim while you fin. Remember, proper finning doesn't need to be or feel incredibly powerful. It should feel gentle and natural and it, like it doesn't take any energy. It should be very relaxed and move your hips and your upper leg as little as possible so that you can kind of feel like you're laying flat. For our next tip, let's try and solve the issue that you might find when you naturally start drifting up when you want to stay at depth or sinking when you want to be hovering. What if the solution was right in front of your face this whole time? Let's dive into that visual secret that elite divers use to pinpoint their buoyancy control. Imagine you're suspended in the blue void, surrounded by nothing but water. How do you know if you're moving up or down or staying right where you are? It's not as easy as it sounds without referring to your depth gauge on your dive computer. Without visual references, you are essentially flying blind underwater. This lack of spatial awareness can make it harder to learn how to control your buoyancy. So as all things, you should start working up to this point, add some training wheels and start improving this area so that you can even start hovering without that spatial awareness in the future. Try this technique. Pick a stationary object at your desired depth. It could be a distinctive coral formation or a particular spot on the reef. You can even add a touch of air to your DSMB and let it unreal a touch and tie it to a rock on the ground. You can add markers to it or you can just use the DSMB itself. Anywhere along it, you're just trying to find a reference point that you can focus on. Now. Focus on maintaining your position relative to this reference point. If you start to drift up or down, you'll notice it immediately and can make micro adjustments to your buoyancy. Practice keeping the line in front of you at all times and focus on as little movement over a good two to three minutes. You can rinse and repeat this exercise and even place multiple markers on your line to move up and down slowly over time without breaking your trim. You should not be finning this entire time unless it's precise movements to counteract a tiny bit of current. This could be a good time to practice your back finning, which helps you go in reverse as well and keep that line in front of you. Further, the ascending and descending precisely will further flex your buoyancy control muscles as you should be controlling this entirely with your breathing. Do note, you want to always avoid letting the line get past you. Make a V with your fingers and control the line so it doesn't create a potential entanglement hazard if you get close to it. The idea is to keep a distance away from it, but if the current's taking you into it, don't let it just start going past you. Control the line, push it out, and try and maneuver around it. It is an entanglement hazard and I don't want you to be entangled. Once you feel you're getting the hang of things, practice closing your eyes for periods of time and see how well you're able to hold your spot to the marker when you open them. With lots of practice, you'll graduate and start being able to practice without visible markers to which you must use your depth gauge and watch it. As a pro tip, whenever you go out and try to practice this fairly intense buoyancy exercise, go ahead and watch your dive gauge and know the exact depth you're trying to hold. If it's, let's say, 30 feet, that is your depth you're pinning to. So as you're going up or down with your eyes open or whatever practice you're trying to do that I recommended you, start trying to gauge the maximum deviation in the three minute period that you had. So if I dropped the 34 feet and I was trying to pin at 30, my deviation would be four feet. And so my goal would be constantly trying to improve. You know, I can do better than four and that's a measurable result. In three minutes, the maximum deviation I got to my target was four feet. 
And if my eyes are closed, my target might deviate more and obviously I have to open my eyes every now and then to check how I'm doing, but you will still have a measurable result by the end of it. And eventually when you have no reference markers, you will be more comfortable. This is a skill building dive and make sure you log your maximum deviation so that you know how you did on your last skill building exercise. If you can get down to one meter or three feet, of deviation, you're doing great. If you can get zero, that's awesome. Better yet, if you're with a dive buddy, you can practice together with them by maintaining visual contact with your buddy and noting their relative position. You can gauge your own depth and movement. Always keep your depth gauge easily viewable on your arm like this. To do this, it's strongly advisable to put your dive computer on your right wrist so that you can have your left hand free to make error adjustments of your BCD with your inflator hose if needed. And then you'll want to go ahead and start staring your dive buddy intimately into their eyes. Keep eye contact and if the less you and your buddy move up or down and you have your dive computer right there, then you can just start holding that depth and for two to three minutes, see how well you do. How's your deviation? Test each other to pin and get that zero deviation with good trim. Practicing this skill can feel a bit strange at first. You might feel yourself constantly darting your eyes around, trying to keep track of multiple reference points, but stick with it over time it becomes second nature. You'll develop almost an intuitive sense of your position in the water, allowing you to more naturally and subconsciously pin a depth and more quickly realize when your depth is changing. For our last tip, as your buoyancy control becomes second nature, you might think you've reached a pinnacle of diving skills. But here's the twist. True mastery isn't about perfection. It's about endless improvement. And are you ready to take your buoyancy to the next level? Let me show you why even the most seasoned divers never stop practicing their buoyancy skills. It's not just about maintaining what you've learned, it's about pushing the boundaries of what's possible underwater. And more importantly, pushing the boundaries of practical skills with all the tips we've done before. Think of buoyancy control as the foundation of your diving toolkit. Every other skill you've developed builds upon this base. It's like trying to master a complex yoga pose. You can't nail the more advanced moves without constantly refining your balance and core strength. Many divers fall into the trap of thinking buoyancy control is a set it and forget it skill. They nail their weighting, practice their breathing, and assume they're good to go. But that's like a professional athlete skipping practice once they've made the team. In diving, as in all sports, the real pros know consistent practice is the key to excellence. So how do we keep improving? The secret lies in task loading. It's that secret word I had mentioned earlier. This means practicing your buoyancy control while performing other diving skills. It's like patting your head and rubbing your stomach underwater. Challenging, but incredibly effective for honing your skills. Start with straightforward tasks like deploying your DSMB while maintaining perfect trim and depth. It might seem easy on paper, but trust me, coordinating all these actions while staying perfectly buoyant can be trickier than solving a Rubik's Cube in low visibility. Have someone film you and see how you did at nailing the perfectly neutral trim. As you get more comfortable, ramp up the complexity. Try performing safety drills, such as practicing an emergency drill to share air with your buddy for a few moments or holding a rock solid depth while taking underwater photos. These practical exercises force you to divide your attention, mimicking real world scenarios where you'll need to multitask without compromising your buoyancy. But don't just practice, be critical of your performance. Are you truly pinning your depth or are you bobbing up and down? Recording in your dive log, as I mentioned earlier, will help you keep a log of how you've been doing at these different exercises. Can you maintain awareness of your surroundings while focusing on a task? Is your dive team floating away? Did someone just chase down a turtle to your right? 
Are you aware of everything around you while getting that DSMB ready and holding your depth? These are all questions that separate good divers from great ones. For the truly ambitious, try taking off your mask, putting it back on, and clearing it while maintaining perfect trim. It's the underwater equivalent of changing a tire while driving. Not for the faint of heart, but incredibly effective at building the confidence and control. Do this in a controlled environment and with a dive buddy that knows you're about to practice the skill and are ready to help you. One of my favorite challenges, and it'll really build your finning capability, is to try and fin in a straight line with your eyes closed. If you know somewhere with a fixed line or set a line yourself, this is a great way to just see how close to the line you can be, closing your eyes, finning down for a time, opening it, how close to the line are you? If you're finning well and you're holding your buoyancy and trim, you'll be right over it. And so this is something to practice and see if you can get better at. Remember, the goal isn't to master these drills overnight. It's about consistent, Focus practice over time. Each dive is an opportunity to refine your skills, push those limits, and become a more competent and confident diver. You can definitely use the safety stop to practice some of these skills, even if you're doing fun dives. Ultimately, buoyancy is the fundamental pillar of all your skills. Everything you do from here will build off that solid foundation. So practice often, challenge yourself, strive to become that buoyancy Jedi you've always dreamed of being. As you apply these techniques from this video, you'll notice a transformation, not just in your buoyancy, but in your overall approach to diving. You'll move more efficiently, conserve air better, and gain a newfound confidence underwater. But the impact doesn't stop at the water's edge. The mindset of continuous improvement and adaptability you develop in diving can ripple into other areas of your life. And speaking of continuous improvement, the next video for you to watch to build on your newfound buoyancy should be about improving your air consumption. Check that out here. In addition, be sure to check out my series of improving your scuba skills here. And until next time.